thank you for the opportunity to speak here. Um, so I will begin with, um, okay, so now I, okay, now I managed to advance my slides, good. So, um, uh, so I will begin with the conjecture uh, of uh, Odlisko and Poonen. Uh, so uh, this uh, asks for the following. Um, let uh, P of X be a polynomial with integer coefficients. Um, and uh, so the uh, leading coefficient and the constant coefficient is fixed uh, to be one. And uh, the rest of the coefficients are random and they are independent and uh, they could, can take the values uh, zero and one with equal probability. So this is, this is the uh, model that we are uh, working with. And uh, the uh, problem is to show that uh, such a random polynomial it will be irreducible in uh, Zx um, uh, with high probability, um, uh, probability approaching one as the uh, degree of the polynomial goes to infinity. Um, so this is just uh, one instance of, uh, of, um, of the, uh, expressing the expectation that uh, if you just uh, write down uh, polynomial randomly, uh, then you expect it to be uh, irreducible. Um, um, so uh, here is a result towards this conjecture. Um, so uh, we need to assume the extended Riemann hypothesis. Um, I will tell you about this uh, in a minute, uh, precisely what I mean. Um, and uh, so then let's consider a polynomial as, uh, as in the above conjecture. And uh, then the claim is that uh, with a very high probability, so the uh, probability that it, uh, um, yeah, uh, so this minus should not be there. Um, uh, so this is uh, uh, exponentially in square root of d. Uh, um, plus an epsilon in the exponent. Um, so with, with very high probability, uh, the polynomial can be factored as uh, Q times R, where uh, Q is uh, irreducible, uh, and uh, R is a polynomial of uh, not too big degree. So it is, uh, it is at most uh, square root of D, and it is a product of uh, cyclotomic polynomials. So it kind of says that uh, it is kind of irreducible uh, with uh, very high probability. Um, and um, so uh, you can have two objections uh, regarding this statement, uh, uh, why this doesn't prove uh, the conjecture. And um, so one is uh, that the conclusion is not that the polynomial is irreducible. Um, and uh, so in fact, this is not, um, uh, not a big problem. So uh, uh, very easily from this um, uh, statement, you can, uh, they use this one that the polynomial, the probability that the polynomial is irreducible uh, will be uh, asymptotic to uh, one minus uh, square root of uh, two over pi d. So uh, some specific constant over uh, square root of d uh, plus an error term, which is uh, of the order uh, one over d. So uh, the point is here that um, if you just look at uh, the um, possibility that your polynomial uh, might vanish at minus one, um, then this will, this will happen with roughly this probability, this uh, constant over square root of D. Uh, and this is, this is what, uh, what contributes uh, this term. And um, so this is not, not too, too hard uh, to work out. And uh, so this is one instance of the cyclotomic factor that can come up. And, and for other low degree uh, cyclotomic factors, you, uh, it's uh, uh, probably with some work, it's possible to work out uh, precisely what the probability is that it, it arises. Um, so, um, but if you, if, you, if you want a statement with, uh, with uh, uh, such a precision without the negative sign here in the exponent, uh, then, uh, then you need to, um, um, you need to allow for these uh, cyclotomic factors. Uh, okay, so this was one objection. The other objection is that uh, we assumed something. And so this something is the extended Riemann hypothesis. So it is the Riemann hypothesis for uh, Dedekind zeta functions, um, zeta sub k, for all number fields, uh, which are obtained by adjoining a root of uh, one of those, these polynomials that uh, appear in the conjecture um, to uh, the rational numbers. 
Um, so, uh, so this is the extended Riemann hypothesis, and and this is uh, this is not known. Uh, so this result is, is conditional, and for this reason, it doesn't resolve the uh, conjecture. Um, so if you just want to prove the conjecture, then uh, it is possible to weaken uh, the hypothesis, the reliance on the uh, Riemann hypothesis uh, quite significantly. Um, so um, so if, you, if, you don't if you're not interested in, in, this, uh, in this error rate, uh, then it is enough to know that uh, there are no uh, zeros of uh, these uh, Dedekind zeta functions uh, very close to one. And, and uh, how close it is uh, um, log d to the uh, three plus epsilon over d. And uh, uh, so what do we know uh, towards this? Well, what we know is that if you, if you draw a somewhat uh, smaller uh, disk around one, uh, so with radius uh, uh, one over log d times d, so the, the log d is not in the, in the numerator with some power, but instead it's, it's in the denominator, uh, then uh, we know that there will be at most one zero. Uh, uh, so there, can, there could be an exceptional zero for the Dedekind zeta function, which in principle could be very, very close to one, uh, but uh, then uh, there are no more. And uh, so, in fact, uh, there is a version of uh, this um, uh, result uh, which uh, allows for an exceptional zero to be quite close to uh, one. So, so the exceptional zero is is perhaps not the bigger issue. The the bigger issue is really that uh, the zero free region that I I would like to have uh, has the log d in the numerator, and um, so this. Uh, this bound that we have is, is kind of old now, and uh, it doesn't look like that uh, uh, anyone has an idea how to improve on it. So um, it's um, uh, still, um, um, it looks like uh, close to, to what we uh, know, but, uh, uh, but it, it's probably very difficult to, uh, to get this unconditionally. Um, so a final remark about this uh, statement is that, um, of course, uh, you don't uh, necessarily um, have to consider the, this uh, distribution uh, that it uh, takes the value zero and one, uh, but instead of that, you could uh, take um, an arbitrary uh, distribution on the integers. Um, and in fact, uh, you can even uh, vary this, uh, so you can, you can change it with, um, with the degree as the degree goes. Uh, it is uh, subject to some, some mild conditions um, um, yeah, that I don't want to state now. Um, uh, but uh, the point is that, that the method is, is quite general. Um, and I will uh, tell you about that uh, in a minute. Um, okay, so there are a, a lot of unconditional results on this uh, problem. So uh, let uh, again P be a, a random polynomial as in the uh, oddly component conjecture. Uh, so the uh, um, uh, coefficients are zero, one, uh, independent with uh, the same probability, with, with probability one half, one half. So, uh, so there is a result by Konyagin, which uh, gives a lower bound on the probability that uh, this polynomial is irreducible. And it is of the form uh, constant over uh, log d. Uh, so we would like to have something uh, which is uh, going to one, and instead we have something which is going to zero, but at least it goes to zero very slowly. And um, uh, very recently, this has been improved uh, a lot by Barry Soroker, Kokulopoulos, and Cosma. Um, I believe uh, one of them gave a talk on this seminar uh, about a year ago. Um, uh, uh, so they proved that, in fact, uh, the probability can be bounded below by uh, an absolute constant. Um, uh, but we still uh, uh, don't have that it would uh, go to one. Um, so some further unconditional results are available if you change the uh, distribution in question. So uh, now I... I take uh, for the coefficients uh, from, which are not the leading coefficient and the constant coefficient, I am, uh, so they are still independent, uh, but now they take the values uh, between uh, one and capital N, 
uh, where capital N is, is uh, some fixed number, it's, uh, which should be a parameter. Um, so uh, there is a, a result by Barry Sarker and Cosma, which, uh, which uh, proves the analog of the conjecture in this setting. Uh, if uh, capital N is an integer, which is divisible by at least uh, four distinct primes. Uh, so the smallest example is, is 210. And then uh, in the paper that I uh, have already mentioned, uh, this is improved to uh, any integer, which is uh, at least uh, 35. Um, and, uh, uh, but somehow the, the probability uh, that uh, they get is not as good as, as uh, what is available in the, um, under the Riemann hypothesis. Uh, so their uh, error is uh, polynomial in N. Uh, which is D, I guess. Uh, so the, the, this N, sh N should be D. Uh, uh, sorry about that. Um, and of course, this, uh, uh, this, uh, um, this, this work is also, um, this, this uh, method will also work for uh, more general distributions, um, uh, but they need a little bit uh, more uh, uh, um, spread out distribution than uh, than something uh, uh, supported on just two points. Uh, but if, if, if something is sufficiently spread out and it has some nice uh, Fourier transform, then, then it will work. Um, okay, so um, um, another comment is, is about the Galois group uh, in question. So if you know that the polynomial is irreducible, uh, you might also be interested in what, what the Galois group of this uh, polynomial is. And um, if you ever uh, uh, tried to uh, find examples uh, in, in a Galois theory uh, course uh, uh, for a problem sheet, then you will uh, know that uh, finding uh, polynomials where the Galois group is, is the symmetry group is, is very easy because mo most of the things that you would write down will have the symmetry group as uh, the Galois group. Um, but that's something that we, we uh, can't quite prove. So, so what, uh, what can be done is that in all of these results, the statement that, uh, that the polynomial is irreducible, it can be exchanged for the statement that the Galois group contain, contains the alternating group. Um, uh, and uh, it is, it is uh, difficult to distinguish between the alternating group and the uh, symmetry group. And um, so this is uh, actually a very frustrating problem. So um, when I was first working on this, then I, I made some computer experiments and I uh, tested all polynomials that appear in the oddly scopoon and conjecture uh, up to degree 31. So that's uh, a little bit more than a billion polynomials. And none of them has Galois group, uh, which is equal to the alternating group. So there will be some uh, which uh, have Galois group contained in the alternating group, but exactly equal to the alternating group there are none. Uh, and uh, still we are uh, unable to prove even that uh, uh, most of them uh, is not the alternating group. Uh, Peter, we have a question in the chat by Jacob Streipel. Maybe Jacob, you want to unmute and ask away? don't know how good my microphone is, but the- I hear you fine. Okay, the constant term changed from one to a zero in the statement of the uh, uh, OP conjecture to this unconditional result. I, um, is a zero significant? Uh, say, say again? The constant term in the polynomial on the previous. Oh slide. yes, so um, so so the, the reason uh, so if you know if you if you if you allow zero to be the uh, constant uh, term, uh, then um, so maybe if if you would say that, that the constant term is also zero one with probability one half one half, then the constant term will be zero with probability one half, and if the and if the constant term is zero, then the polynomial is not irreducible because you can you can yeah. factor out the factor x. But in the original um, conjecture, it was was always one, right? But now it's allowed to vary, uh, or I might be missing something. Um, what, what what do you mean? 
wasn't the leading coefficient oh, and the oh oh you mean in this uh, oh okay so yeah. uh, so in this uh, here right here yeah. right so uh, so I, um, I the way i formulated it is that uh, the uh, the values will be between 1 and n 1 and capital n so zero is excluded so basically basically that's that's the only thing that i i i um, i um, was careful to ex exclude that the the constant term uh, can't be zero. Uh, so um, they have a more general version of the result, which maybe would allow an arbitrary interval. Uh, and um, but in that case, they modify the uh, model to uh, to ex exclude uh, 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 zero for the possible values of a zero. Okay. So that, that that's the only thing that you you need to be careful about. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, we, we have a further question by Jordan Ellenberg. Jordan, maybe. Please. Oh, yeah. So I was just, I was, I, I was trying to do this in my head and I couldn't. Like, I mean, the discriminant of a polynomial of degree d with zero one coefficients, I expect is pretty big. And someone could heuristically say, okay, if an integer of size n is a square one over root n of the time, in other words, that's, that's what distinguishes whether you're a d or s d. So, I mean, there's one just expect on naive heuristic grounds that because those discriminants are so large, there should be only yes. finally- Yes, perfect. so uh, so the discriminant, uh, the dis discriminant is expected to be roughly of the size uh, d to the d uh, with some constants oh, yeah. around the, uh, uh, I mean, it, okay, it, then, yeah, then theoretically like it could the be, the it could be uh, smaller for some polynomials, but it, somehow it shouldn't happen. And okay. then, um, uh, the probability that that such a, a thing would hit a square is uh, just uh, extremely low, so it, yeah. is, it is not surprising. Agree. Um, so it will be occasionally square. Uh, so it could happen that. Uh, so, so so most of the time this happens. Uh, um, you are in a situation when the that the Galois group is not uh, primitive. So. Uh, it could happen that your polynomial is a, is a polynomial in, in x square or x cube or something like that, and um, in that case, in that case, your uh, your Galois group will be uh, imprimitive, and uh, and um, um, and, um, and and sometimes uh, then the discriminant will be square. Uh, but basically, those are the those are kind of the situations when, that I found. Uh, but some are still still proving. You see, you see, the problem is that uh, um, uh, the discriminant is is uh, some sort of uh, uh, complicated um, uh, several variables polynomial, and you are uh, plugging in uh, plugging only uh, zero and one in the variables. So handling this with with um, uh, uh, analytic number theory methods is is really frightening. Um, but anyhow, so I mean, it's uh, it's um, it, it's a problem that I uh, that I really like, and uh, uh, and so far I, I I was not able to uh, solve it. Um, other questions? Okay, so let me uh, uh, please stop me if if there is something. Um, so uh, let me just remind you what uh, um, the theorem that we proved with uh, Emmanuel uh, was. Uh, so we assume the extended Riemann hypothesis, and we take uh, a random polynomial as in the oddly scopulent conjecture. So the coefficients that you see here are uh, independent and zero one with probability half half. And then the claim is that uh, the polynomial can be factored in the form of a, an irreducible polynomial plus uh, something of a small degree, which only contains uh, cyclotomic factors. And this happens with very high probability. So uh, I uh, want to tell you uh, very briefly uh, uh, the main uh, scheme of the proof. Um, and uh, so the main reason uh, why I, I want to uh, tell you this is because it's, it's quite a general method. And later on in the talk, I will uh, give you some, uh, tell you about some uh, newer de developments where this um, uh, method was used. Um, 
So the proof is, is based on the uh, following idea, uh, which, which is a consequence of the uh, Chebotara density theorem, or in this case, actually it's just a special case of it, uh, which is called the prime ideal theorem, uh, which says the following. So uh, now let's uh, take a fixed polynomial with integer coefficients. And um, I want to determine whether it is uh, irreducible or not. And um, here is one way of doing this. So if uh, the polynomial is irreducible, then um, uh, the polynomial, then this polynomial will have on average uh, one root in uh, the finite field FP uh, if, you, if you are averaging over uh, the primes. And uh, um, so this is, this is a fact. And um, so what you can uh, do with this is that if you uh, take a general polynomial now, and uh, now you uh, uh, solve this uh, uh, polynomial in uh, finite fields uh, with uh, uh, various primes. And for each prime, you uh, count how many uh, solutions, how many roots you have. And uh, the average number of uh, the uh, roots will tell you uh, how many uh, distinct irreducible factors of your polynomial have in uh, Z of X. Uh, because each such factor will uh, contribute one on average. Uh, so this is the uh, this uh, simple fact is the main um, idea behind the proof. And uh, so here is uh, here is how it is used. So um, uh, I take a random polynomial as in the uh, conjecture, and uh, here is the quantity that I'm interested in. It is the expected number of distinct irreducible factors of my polynomial. Uh, then, um, uh, using this uh, uh, observation on the previous slide, uh, I can write this as the um, expectation over, over the uh, random polynomial of the expectation for choosing a random prime in, uh, in some interval uh, capital N to uh, 2N. And I'm averaging the number of roots of the polynomial in, in FP. So if, I, if I'm just looking at the, uh, what's inside the outer uh, expectation, then this will be the uh, number of uh, uh, distinct irreducible factors of, uh, of P. And then I'm just averaging over, over the polynomial. And uh, of course, then I have, I have some error term uh, that I will uh, uh, tell you uh, in a minute. Uh, and uh, okay, so now comes the uh, big idea, which is always the same. So you have two expectations, then you exchange them. Uh, so uh, what you are going to do is that you uh, are uh, first um, um, averaging uh, over uh, the prime, and then you are averaging over uh, the polynomial. Um, and um, if you are if you fix the prime, then uh, you can uh, take this uh, step further. And what you can do is that you can take all elements in the finite field and you can uh, sum up the probability that that particular element is a root of the polynomial. So this then that's by definition the expected number of roots. Um, um, okay, so uh, so I have I have this expression. And uh, so basically the hope is that um, I will be able to uh, say something about what the probability is that a random polynomial uh, uh, is uh, zero evaluated at a given uh, A uh, for a given FP. Um, and uh, so basically the hope is that when I plug in that into this formula, uh, then um, I will get uh, the result that the uh, that the average number of uh, uh, distinct irreducible factors of P will be exactly one. And, uh, and then um, I will be happy. So uh, now, of course, one thing that I'm, I'm worried about is this error. So I want to uh, know something about this. And uh, this is where the uh, zeros of the Dedekind set of functions come in. So if you want to prove this, um, uh, this fact uh, on the previous slide about um, uh, about um, uh, an irreducible polynomial having uh, uh, one root on average in FP, 
then the proof of this will be very similar to the usual uh, proof of the prime number theorem. And the uh, 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 difference is that uh, you need to plug in the uh, Dedekind zeta function of, um, of, the, of some number field instead of the Riemann zeta function. And then um, what this error is, is uh, of course it depends on, on capital N. So how, how far up you are going with uh, the primes. And, um, uh, and it uh, depends on where the zeros of the Dedekind zeta function is. And um, so if you assume the Riemann hypothesis, then this, uh, this uh, error will be small uh, as soon as you take primes which are um, larger than some polynomial of the degree, maybe d square, I, I don't exactly remember. Um, but uh, basically the point is that you, you only need to go up with the prime up to some, some uh, power of the degree. Um, and this is something that we will uh, care uh, about uh, later very much. Um, so uh, the goal is to show that uh, the probability that a given element of a finite field is, uh, is a zero of a polynomial is roughly one over P. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is what we want to show. And in fact, what we are going to show is that uh, if, you, uh, if you fix a prime and you fix an element in the finite field, then if you evaluate uh, your random polynomial on this given element, then you get uh, uh, roughly a uniform distribution on FP. So not only that uh, it will take the value zero with uh, roughly probability one over P, but in fact, it will take uh, any values with, uh, roughly, with probability roughly one over P. Um, Okay, so uh, it turns out that you can think about this as uh, some kind of uh, random walk on the finite field FP. So uh, this is the random walk that you need to consider. Uh, so these, the elements are X naught, X1, etc. And uh, so you start the walk from one, X naught is equal to one. And then this is how you propagate it. So at each step, you multiply uh, the previous step by A, and then you add uh, something random. Uh, so it will be either zero or one and, and the, the steps are uh, independent. So this is a, uh, this is a nice uh, Markov chain on uh, FP. And uh, so it turns out that, uh, so if you uh, make formally the substitution that you change the BJ uh, to uh, AD minus one, uh, then uh, the distribution of uh, P of A will be uh, the uh, D step of the random walk, except that in the last step, you are forced uh, to uh, move by plus one and uh, uh, plus zero is not allowed. Uh, this is because uh, the leading coefficient and the constant term were uh, uh, fixed to be one. Um, okay. so. So basically, we, we got a nice, uh, a nice Markov chain on FP. And uh, uh, so basically, what Markov chains do is uh, that uh, the distribution of uh, the J uh, step of this uh, Markov chain uh, will converge to the uniform distribution on uh, the finite field. And this is precisely what we want to show. And now the question is that uh, how fast uh, does it converge to the uniform distribution? So uh, remember that. Um, we have to take uh, somewhat large primes uh, compared uh, to the degree uh, so that the error term in the um, uh, Chebotarev density theorem will be sufficiently small. Um, uh, but you, uh, uh, somehow this is uh, something which is, which is uh, fighting against that because here you, um, for a given prime, you, the degree has to be sufficiently large so that you get this uh, equidistribution. Um, so um, uh, here I need to introduce a definition uh, in the theory of Markov chains. It's called uh, the mixing time or delta mixing time of the chain. So delta is a parameter between zero and one and uh, uh, this quantity is denoted by T of delta. And uh, so this is the smallest J, the smallest time such that the uh, distribution of the random walk, which is, I denote by mu j after j steps, is uh, its distance to, uh, to the uniform distribution is less than or equal to delta. 
Um, so here I'm, I'm using total variation distance, but uh, for the purposes of this talk, it doesn't really matter which norm you are using. Um, uh, okay, so um, uh, what is known about this? So, uh, okay, so uh, here, is a, here is a result by, which is based on uh, uh, some work of Konyagin um, later, um, uh, so, um, and it, it emerged in a collaboration of, of uh, these, uh, these four people. Uh, they uh, didn't publish it, um, but now uh, the details are available in a paper of, of uh, Emmanuel Breyer and myself. Um, so here is, here is what, um, uh, what you can say. So uh, first of all, you need to make some assumption on, uh, on A, uh, this element of the finite field. So um, obviously you don't want it to be zero because then somehow this uh, random walk will not be very interesting because every time you multiply by zero, you get back to zero. So uh, then, then this uh, random walk will just uh, move between zero and one and it will surely not actually distribute. Um, you also don't want A to be equal to one because uh, then you just have the, um, you just have a, have a random walk on FP when you are either staying where you are or maybe you move to the right by one. And um, so you will need to take at least, at least uh, P steps uh, just to have any chance of, of, uh, of going around the circle. Uh, and in fact, uh, to get uh, to actually distribution, you will need to take p square steps, and that's just way too much. Um, and uh, similar problems will um, occur if the multiplicative order of A is small. So you need to make an assumption that the multiplicative order of A is not too small. So it has to be at least uh, log p to the power uh, one plus epsilon. Uh, this is actually not too bad. So this will, this will exclude some uh, some elements of the finite field from this consideration, and uh, they will be have to you will have to deal uh, with them separately. But there are very few of these guys, and uh, and uh, it's uh, it, it's not, it's not going to make you a big problem. Um, so so if if the multiplicative order of a is not too small, then the mixing time will be actually quite good. Um, so what you should have in mind is that maybe for the delta you take some power of uh, some negative power of p. So uh, so what you get the estimate for the mixing time will be uh, log p to the two plus epsilon. So so what this what this says is that uh, what is the relationship between uh, the degree d and the the size of the primes p uh, uh, where you are doing the averaging. So, so what the, the, this uh, constraint tells you is that you, uh, uh, the degree uh, should be at least as big as uh, log p to the uh, two plus epsilon. And the other constraint in the, in the Chabotarev uh, um, was that you uh, didn't want the um, uh, prime, uh, the prime uh, had to be at least uh, maybe the degree to the 10. Uh, something like that. So these two things are clearly uh, very much compatible with each other. And then uh, basically we are in business. And uh, um, uh, so you plug in this one over P uh, inside this formula, then you will get uh, precisely one. And, and as I explained, uh, the error terms uh, will be controlled. And uh, uh, then uh, the proof just works. And if you, if you work out uh, uh, everything, then you will get the statement uh, uh, that I uh, um, stated in the beginning. Um, okay, so so far this was uh, kind of old news. Um, and uh, so now I want to tell you about some uh, more uh, recent developments, which will be about uh, other uh, uh, families of random polynomials. So what uh, what other families of random polynomials uh, um, are interesting. So um, I, I have to uh, talk first about uh, the classical situation, uh, even though in this uh, setting, uh, uh, this method that I'm talking about is, uh, hasn't been uh, applied and, and probably, probably other methods will do better. So, um, uh, but nevertheless, let me just uh, tell you what this is. 
So the classical setup is uh, that you fix the degree uh, d and you take a large integer h. And now you take a random polynomial with independent coefficients that are uniformly distributed between minus h and h. Um, so uh, this is kind of dual to the oddly scopulent situation. So in the oddly scopulent situation, you fix the, the height of the polynomial and you let uh, the degree to infinity. Here you fix the degree and you let the height uh, go to infinity. Um, so uh, this was actually originally studied by uh, Van der Werden. Uh, who proved that the uh, probability that the polynomial is irreducible uh, will be roughly one minus uh, uh, ordo uh, one over h. And this has been um, 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 made more precise by Cella who worked out the precise value of the constant. So, uh, so basically, uh, basically, uh, the result is that the probability that uh, the polynomial is irreducible is one minus um, uh, some constant over h, and this the value of this uh, constant is explicitly uh, determined. Um, but it uh, it does it is not very interesting for the purposes of talk what it is, and uh, it's not it's not very it, it's uh, it would take. Uh, uh, half a uh, slide to uh, write it uh, down. So I didn't do it. Um, and then uh, there was a, a, a big uh, uh, conjecture of Van der Werden, um, uh, which asked about, okay, so can you say instead of irreducible here uh, that the Galois group is uh, the symmetry group and can you still have the same probability? And so this has been open for, uh, for quite a while. And very recently, Manju Bhargava approved this. And uh, so actually he talked about this on this uh, seminar series not too long ago. So um, I just uh, uh, wanted to uh, uh, mention this, uh, but I will not uh, tell more about this now. Um, so uh, here is another setting which uh, some uh, uh, which, which uh, people are interested in, and that's the um, uh, characteristic uh, polynomials of random matrices. Uh, so here is um, here are the details of the model. So you take um, a random matrix M uh, with uh, independent identically distributed entries uh, with respect to some fixed uh, uh, distribution in the integers. Uh, so if you like, it can be uh, zero and one with probability half half or uh, or something else. And now you take uh, the polynomial uh, to be the uh, characteristic polynomial of this matrix, and then uh, uh, you are interested in various properties of this uh, of this polynomial. Uh, this has a massive literature, and in particular, one question that was asked is. Um, is it true that this polynomial is irreducible in ZX uh, with high probability? Uh, and recently this was uh, proved uh, conditionally on the same hypothesis as above uh, by uh, Sean Eberhard. Uh, um, so he proved that under the extended dreamer hypothesis, uh, the probability that uh, the uh, uh, characteristic polynomial is irreducible is uh, one minus uh, an exponentially small error um, in the size of the matrix. So again, this N uh, is uh, supposed to be the, the same as the D. Uh, apologies for that. And uh, the constants uh, that you have here uh, are uh, 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 just depending on the common law of the entries. Um, okay, uh, and he also obtained the unconditional results which are uh, based on the method of, uh, of Berry Sorokar and Cosma. Uh, and uh, there, uh, the um, he needs to assume something about the um, about the uh, common law of the entries, and and it is that it uh, there is a uh, an integer capital n such that uh, when you take uh, the distribution of the entries modulo capital n, then uh, it will be uniform, and capital n has to be divisible by at least uh, four distinct primes. Um, so it is, um, it is uh, somewhat uh, uh, more restricted. Um, and uh, also the error term 
so he in that case he, he just proves that uh, the probability is converging to one. Uh, on the other hand, that's an unconditional result. So um, so the proof of this result is is uh, based on the same scheme uh, that uh, I told you about. Uh, and somehow, if you remember uh, what I what I said. Uh, um, uh, what this uh, uh, scheme of proof really cared about, about the random polynomial is, is what is the probability that a given element of a given finite field is uh, zero of this polynomial. And uh, so somehow if, if, if that can be uh, estimated well, uh, then um, you, can, um, you can basically run the same scheme and, and prove that the polynomial is irreducible. So the main, uh, the main input of, uh, um, in this proof is, uh, if, uh, is this uh, result, uh, which says that if you take a prime and you take a fixed uh, element lambda in, in Z mod PZ, um, then the probability that uh, M minus lambda times uh, the identity is uh, not singular will be um, uh, equal to uh, this uh, thing that you see here. And if you, if you, so what you should have in mind is that uh, the prime P is, is kind of large. So um, actually the first uh, factor will be the most relevant one, which is uh, one minus one over P. So, so what you have here is, is roughly uh, one minus one over P. And uh, so basically what this, what this tells you is that the probability that lambda is a root of the characteristic polynomial is roughly one over P. And this, this is precisely the input that we need uh, for that uh, uh, scheme of proof to work. Um, and uh, so uh, what is important here is that uh, uh, the constant that you have here, it um, uh, depends only on the common law of the entries of M and it, is, it doesn't depend on uh, lambda or the prime. So actually that, that's, that's the main point that it, uh, it doesn't depend on lambda. And uh, so in fact, uh, in fact, uh, Sean proved a uh, uh, much more general statement. Um, so um, the crucial assumption is uh, that the entries of the matrix are independent, uh, but they don't really uh, have to be in this uh, special form. So in fact, the, the distributions can be um, uh, kind of arbitrary distributions in FP, uh, modulo some uh, very mild uh, non-degeneracy conditions. So, I mean, one thing that you certainly don't want to see is that a particular entry is uh, equal to some fixed element of the finite field with probability 99%. So, uh, that, that's uh, th those are the so sort of things that you need to exclude here. Um, but um, 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 it's uh, it's actually quite general. Um, okay, and uh, then uh, very recently uh, there it was another paper by Ferber, uh, Jain, uh, Sark, and Sony, who um, uh, considered the variation of this problem. Uh, where uh, the matrix is, uh, is a symmetric matrix. So you take a random symmetric matrix uh, with independent plus minus one entries. Um, so, so, the, uh, so they are independent on and above the diagonal and, and below the diagonal, they are just uh, what they have to be uh, to make the matrix symmetric. And um, so again, this is conditional on the extended Riemann hypothesis. And uh, they conclude that the probability that the characteristic polynomial is irreducible is um, equal to one minus uh, some error. And, and here the error is a little bit worse than uh, what was before. And um, so uh, the main point of, uh, of this work is that um, you need to uh, get a version of this result where the entries of the matrix are not independent, uh, but uh, they, uh, but you, but you have you have a symmetric matrix. So so only the uh, entries on the diagonal and above are independent, and and uh, the entries below the diagonal are, for, are forced uh, uh, to be what they uh, have to be to make the matrix uh, symmetric. Um, and that was uh, uh, non uh, quite non-trivial 
uh, step. So um, uh, I stated the, the theorem in the in a form that appears in the paper. So I I, I stated it with the uh, plus minus one entries, uh, but they do say in the paper that they can uh, handle more general distributions and they leave the details to the reader. Uh, so uh, you can work it out yourself if you. Um, um, yeah, so I guess uh, it's probably probably uh, there is a superfluous minus also here. Uh, sorry about that. Um, okay. Excuse me, I have a question. Yes. Uh, yes. So the first theorem uh, is actually unconditional, but the second one you need the extended. Uh, Riemann hypothesis. So, so if you, for for the theorems about irreducibility of the no, no, on the other paper, they are, the they other are paper. both conditional on the extended, extended Riemann hypothesis. Uh, this uh, theorem about uh, about the uh, about the random matrices, uh, these are unconditional. How about the last one? The last one is about uh, it's the same sp statement, but assuming symmetry. We they need a uh, Extended Riemann hypothesis. The uh, Berber... uh, the extended Riemann hypothesis is only coming in in this uh, scheme of proof that I explained. So, uh, so, so for this uh, for, to show that the characteristic polynomial is irreducible uh -huh. with high probability, for that you need to assume the Riemann hypothesis. For the um, oh, I see, I see. Uh, for 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 these uh, uh, various statements about the um uh, distributions of uh, the uh, uh, characteristic polynomials modulo p uh, these are these are uh, unconditional statements i see thank you okay thank you for the question um okay so in the last uh, 10 minutes or so i want to tell you about an other setting uh, 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 that we consider now and and uh, and here now we move from uh, polynomials in one variables to polynomials in several variables um so let me describe the setting so uh, we take a, a connected simply connected semi simple linear algebraic group uh, g defined over the rationals so um you can just uh, think about sl2 if you want um i uh, actually, I also prefer to think about just SL2. Um, so, and uh, I uh, uh, denote by this uh, simple G uh, the uh, complex points uh, uh, of this uh, algebraic group. Um, okay, then I also need a, a finitely presented group. So, uh, this is generated by uh, K generators, S1 up to SK. And these generators are subject to some um, um, uh, equations, uh, which is that you have R uh, different uh, relations between them. So these are all uh, words in the letters uh, S1 up to SK, and the negative powers are also allowed. Um, and so the condition is that these this must give the when you evaluate these words on the generators you must get the um, um the unit element in the group so uh, now if you if you have this uh, finitely presented group uh, uh, gamma and you have your um, algebraic uh, group uh, g then you can talk about the uh, representation variety of gamma and uh, so it is uh, denoted by home uh, gamma wg, and it is defined as uh, follows. So you take uh, k tuples in your group, and you um, you take those uh, k tuples uh, which uh, satisfies which satisfy the defining relation of your finitely presented group. Uh, okay. So what what what, uh, what is this? So if you want uh, to write down a homomorphism from this uh, finitely presented group to uh, G, then what you need to do is that you need to decide on where you map uh, the generator. So for S1 up to SK, you need to choose elements G1 up to GK 
in, in the group G, uh, which will be the images of your generators. Now you need to test that uh, these elements G1 up to GK satisfies the relations of the group. Because if they don't satisfy the relation of the group, then uh, this will not be a homomorphism from uh, gamma W to uh, G. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, if these, uh, these uh, conditions are satisfied, then you do get a homomorphism. So this is, uh, these, are, these are precisely the homomorphisms from uh, gamma W to G. And um, if you think about it this way, then uh, this is an algebraic variety uh, is a subvariety of the group uh, because it is defined by these equations and these are these are polynomial equations. Um, okay, so 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 we got uh, we got some uh, nice uh, subvariety of the group, and um, uh, but uh, we don't care about all of it. So inside this, there is there is something called the degenerate locus, uh, denoted by v sub deg. Um, and this is the collection of two poles, uh, G1 up to GK, that uh, do not generate a Zariski dense subgroup in G. So it is something that, that, is, uh, that is contained in some um, uh, proper algebraic subgroup of G. So um, for instance, in the SL2, uh, SL2 case, what you should uh, um, uh, think about is that maybe um, all of these uh, guys can be upper triangular matrices. And then um, uh, somehow that, that part of this variety is not so nice and we want to exclude it. So the object that I really care about is the representation variety minus the de degenerate locus. So this will, be, this will be some other variety. Um, and, and I'm interested in the properties of this. So, so, so actually this is something that, that uh, is studied a lot in, in uh, group theory. Um, you can, um, it, 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 is, uh, it is useful for some purposes. Um, and uh, so what I'm going to study is uh, that I'm, I will consider a random group. So, so what is a, what is a random group? So I take uh, W1 and w, w, W1 up to WR uh, randomly. So I, I fix some uh, numbers uh, L and uh, K and R. Uh, K will be, num will be the number of generators. R will be the number of relators. And the relators are chosen uh, randomly and um, uh, they will be independent. And um, uh, there are uh, two possible uh, uh, distributions uh, that you can consider. So one is that you can uh, choose a uniformly uh, chosen element in uh, reduced words or length L. Or the other option that you can consider is, uh, is that you take a simple symmetric random walk on the finite group and you choose your relators uh, according to the distribution of this. Uh, so the, the uh, proofs will uh, work for, uh, for either model. Um, and then, uh, so this is what we can prove. So this is a joint work with Oren Becker, Emmanuel Breyer, and Emmanuel Breyer. And uh, so I, I say work in progress. Um, so everything that I'm going to state in this theorem is, is actually uh, written up, uh, but we want to, we are still working on to uh, make the result nicer. Uh, so we haven't yet released uh, the paper. So you, and again, you need to assume the extended Riemann hypothesis. So this is the Riemann hypothesis for uh, some Dedekind zeta functions that can uh, come up. So if you want, you can assume it for all Dedekind zeta functions. And then the statement is that there are some constants, epsilon and C, uh, such that for, for all L, and uh, the following statements hold with very high probability. So the probability of failure is exponential in L to the epsilon. And, and this time I managed to write this down without the minus. Um, uh, okay, so, so here are the things that we can say. So the first is that if um, the 
number of uh, relators is at least as many as the number of generators, uh, then this, this variety ZW will be empty. If uh, the number of relators is strictly smaller than the uh, number of generators, uh, then we can tell you what the dimension of this variety will be. It will be K minus R times uh, the dimension of the group. Um, okay, so before I, I, I uh, give you the uh, rest of the statements, uh, let me um, uh, tell you why this is what you would expect. So uh, the ambient space uh, for this variety is um, uh, G to the K. So that has a dimension K times uh, the dimension of G. And then you have uh, R equations of this form. Uh, but in fact, these equations are as many equations as the dimension of the group. So for each relator, you lose uh, R times the dimension of G uh, dimension. So this is, this is very much what is expected. So perhaps that is uh, just one thing which, is, which might be a little bit surprising. And that's the case when R is equal to K. So then uh, the natural guess would be that the dimension of this variety is zero. Uh, that would mean that you maybe have some um, finite number of isolated points. But um, uh, this turns out to be uh, not the case. And, and the reason for this is that if you look at uh, this rep the representation variety, then uh, this is invariant under conjugation by elements of G. So if you, if you conjugate each, uh, each coordinate by an element of G, uh, then uh, then uh, it it will uh, it will preserve this this variety. Um, so uh, this uh, this uh, if if this uh, if this is not empty, then it has to be at least of dimension G. So so this is this is the reason why uh, why it's uh, it's empty when R is equal to K. Um, so if R is equal to K minus one, then uh, on top of, uh, of uh, determining the dimension of this variety, uh, we can also show that it is irreducible over the rationals. And if R is even smaller, so it is, it is at most uh, K minus one, uh, then we can also show that uh, the variety will be absolutely irreducible. Um, okay, so I am roughly, I, I'm out of time. So I'm not uh, going to, I, I, I wouldn't have said too much about the proof anyway. Uh, so the final comment I want to make is, the, is about this, this uh, error term. So, uh, so one, one aspect of this theorem that I'm, I'm personally not so satisfied with is that uh, we don't have the exponent. I would really like to have here an exponential error rate. Um, and uh, so I would want to have this statement with epsilon equals to one. And um, so uh, that's uh, basically um, comes from a, a statement about random walks, about mixing times of random walks. And uh, so the, the, the point is that if you, uh, if you do, uh, uh, so there, there, there are some available results uh, in special cases due to health got, uh, so he did the SL2 and the SL3 case and, and maybe maybe uh, a little bit more. And then in full generality by Breyer, Gintau and Piver and Sabo, um, who uh, uh, proved that if you take the simple symmetric random walk on the FP points of, of, uh, of these uh, semi-simple groups, uh, then uh, the mixing time will be at most polylogarithmic in P. Um, and instead of this polylog polylogarithmic, we, uh, we would like to have a logarithmic uh, to have the exponential rate. And um, so that's available in the SL2 case, but with a caveat. And the caveat is, uh, so this is a, this result of, of Breyer and Gambord. So what they showed is that uh, if you don't consider all primes, um, but you, you allow for a, a small exceptional set of primes, then out, outside of this exceptional set of primes, um, uh, you will have uh, uh, the logarithmic uh, uh, mixing time. 
And uh, so now basically the point is that um, it turns out that this uh, method that I described to you to show irreducibility, and, uh, and it is also, uh, some, 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 I, I just did to uh, work in this uh, setting of this uh, theorem. Uh, so you don't have to uh, know this result for all primes. So you don't have to know the mixing time results for all primes. It is, uh, it is fine. Uh, to exclude a small set of primes, and um, and uh, it will it will still work. So it is actually enough uh, for us to plug in this result. But the problem is that uh, currently this is only for SL two, and my my co-authors are working on uh, extending this to the general case. And and if that is done, then we will have the exponential rate here, which uh, with which I will be much happier. Um, so uh, I stop here and I thank you for your attention.